very shy. But what I'd like to do today is cover, uh, start off with an introduction to Behringer. For those that aren't familiar with Behringer, I just want to spend a couple of minutes and uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, about the Behringer company in general. And then we'll go over some of the benefits of filtration, some common terminology. It's not going to be a very, you know, what's a micron, um, what is a beta ratio, things like that, and where and why to select certain types of filters is the primary basis for, for the course, along with showing you what, uh, what we have to offer through the Molly fil Industrial Filtration product line. But to begin, Behringer is a, a manufacturer of hydraulic accessory components, um, one of which you may or may not be familiar with is our tube clamps for many years. And we have a complete range from a standard series, twin series, heavy duty series, double heavy duty to secure hydraulic and process lines, uh, tube and pipe uh, for many applications. And uh, it's available for uh, in different uh, hardware styles from carbon steel, zinc plated, stainless steel. So I've got a real complete product line for securing noise and vibration. In addition to that, Behringer also manufactures and supplies a number of uh, filter elements from hydraulic interchange filter elements to uh, a general process water type filtration. We've got a complete line of, uh, of interchange elements. In addition to those two Behringer products, we represent uh, Rodelman and Molly Industrial Filter, which are both two companies out of uh, Germany. Rodelman uh, shut off and control technology, a complete range of two-way, three-way, multi-way ball valves, along with specialty valves such as accumulator shut off and safety blocks. Uh, sandwich plate isolation valves for directional control valves. And the Molly Industrial Filtration, which we'll be spending a little bit of time on this afternoon. Molly um, has been manufacturing hydraulic filters. They were the first in Germany. They started and uh, they've got a real complete breadth of, of product line, both for uh, hydraulics and some other applications, which I'll, I'll touch on briefly. But our product line, we've got a number of uh, competitors in each product group that, that we're directly or functionally interchangeable with. So some of the things that you may look, uh, look for when you're out in the field, um, if someone's using Stoff clamps or Hydac clamps, we buy PBM, Bromatic. Ball valves the same way. The Roman ball valves are very similar uh, in design to uh, Hydac, Stoff. Uh, anchor, DMIC, and our filter elements interchange. The filter elements and filter, uh, complete filter assemblies uh, can be used uh, where there's applications for Paul and Hydax, Schroeder, Zynga, Donaldson. So I just wanted to throw out a, a few names that you may be familiar with that if you, the Behringer can offer a, uh, an alternative to. So now on to the Molly. Uh, Filtration. Um, Molly Industrial Filtration is located in uh, their headquarters in, is in Erringen, Germany. And that division is separated into three product groups, the hydraulic product group, the process product group, and the dust. Uh, what we'll be focusing on today is, is more I want to let you know about their process filter uh, division or, or product line which is for, it's a self-cleaning automatic back flush or scraper type to be used with uh, for fluids such as machine tool coolants, remove chips and metal particles from machine tool coolants. Uh, but it's a very versatile filter which can be used for high viscous fluids like uh, glue and paste. Um, they're used on paint to be used in, in applications where you're not going to have a closed system where you're always going to be introducing dirt into the system. So that's a, a good area for automatic self-cleaning filters. They also have, have, have a dust product line, which includes elements and complete filter housings, vacuum systems for air and dust filtration. 
uh, a few two new companies to Mali. Mali acquired a company called ACO and uh, NFV, which are in northern Germany near Hamburg. And the uh, Mali ACO product line is a line of basket strainers, uh, cast housings, welded housings, duplex uh, basket strainers, along with some automatic back flushing filters for water, primarily water applications. And it's another, another product line that complements the existing Mali industrial filtration from a standpoint of uh, more water filtration and uh, coarser strainer type filtration. The Mali NFV products are not so much in filtration, it's more of a separation product group, which they have a, a number of products available to separate water from oil, oil from water. It, uh, it's more of a, a separation used a lot in the marine industry and in power plants to remove water from the turbine oils um, and in the marine applications for cleaning up the, the bilge water systems and ballast water tanks. So that, that was a, a basic overview of the Mali along with a, a little bit on the Behringer products. So now to get into the and, uh, terminology and the benefits of filtration. Basically, by improving the filtration in a hydraulic system, you're going to be in improving the, the lifetime of the fluid, the surface life of the fluid. You're going to reduce the risk of premature, premature damage and failure to the uh, hydraulic components. Repair and replacement costs will be reduced. The reliability of the machines increase. So it increases the life of a lot of the expensive critical components. So by maintaining the quality of the oil, you really um, improve the overall quality of the system, the quality of production, and uh, reduce downtime. Some of the terminology that we'll be using and you, you hear uh, frequently is a filter housing. What exactly is the, is the filter that uh, it's made out of either plastic, aluminum, steel, and it's installed in the line and contains a filter of the fluid. So the filter element is the cleanable or a cartridge or a spin-on that fits inside the housing and it collects the contamination in the fluid. So that's the item, the device that's really doing the filter. There's sometimes usually a contamination indicator which alerts the operator as to when the useful life of the element is uh, is about to end. And there's a number of uh, types. Uh, the simplest type would be a gauge or a pop-up indicator. Or you can also have a or electronic indicator. Some of the electronic indicators have analog outputs to show you during the time frame of the machine. It shows you get the maximum life out of the element and change it when it's totally saturated. The bypass valve is a safety device inside the filter housing that opens in order to prevent catastrophic, catastrophic failure of the element. When the element is no longer useful and it's saturated, um, the bypass valve opens to bypass the fluid past the uh, element run the risk of collapsing and causing a lot of damage downstream of the filter. And here shows you visually a typical pressure filter. Usually on top is the, the contamination indicator. Could be visual or electrical. The filter head is the, the part that is actually um, uh, secured into the pipe. Uh, the typical pressure style filter the head would be um, on top with a bowl um, uh, below that. And there's also base mounted filters where the, the head would be on the bottom. But it's where the ports are connected and the line is connected into the filter. The filter element, again, is a replaceable or cleanable media device inside the filter. And there's always some type of filter bowl to keep the element uh, secured into the head. 
are rated in a micron, which a micron is a one millionth of a meter. It's very small. And to give you an example of what a micron is, because typically in hydraulics we're, we're talking 10 micron, 3 micron, 25 micron. So the lowest we can visibly see is around 40 micron. Uh, human hair is about 70 micron. So we're really looking at bacteria and red blood cell size that we're filtering metallic oils and milled flowers 25. So there's a lot of, um, it's very small, it's uh, uh, smaller than the eye can see. And why we're concerned about the micron rating and why we have to filter so fine is due to the, the type of uh, components used in hydraulic systems and the, um, <clears throat> the clearances between individual components. But if you look at this, uh, a typical servo valve um, is one to four micron that we're in the spool to sleeve and we're trying to reduce the amount of contaminants um, that can get lodged in there or uh, uh, create more abrasion and break down more particles. So a lot of the, the highly dirt sensitive components require piston pumps are, are very susceptible to dirt um, uh, damage due to dirt, uh, gear pumps, vein pumps. So really we're trying to protect the uh, more expensive equipment in the hydraulic system. Beta ratio is also something that you'll hear frequently when referring to the efficiency or um, the efficiency of a hydraulic filter element. And a beta ratio is a number of particles upstream of a particular size. So if we're looking at 10 micron, and you have 100,000 10 micron particles upstream of the filter, you compare that to the number that escaped through that 10 micron filter element to go downstream. So for instance, in this diagram, if you have 100,000 10 micron particles upstream of the filter and 1,000 escape and go downstream through the filter, you have a beta ratio of 100, 100,000 ratio of 100, which equates to a 99% efficient filter. If you have that same 100,000 particles upstream and only 500 downstream, you have a beta ratio of 200 or 99.5 percent efficient. And all of our filter elements are rated at that 200 beta ratio or 99 percent efficient, 99.5 percent efficiency rating um, for all of our a minimum for all of our filter elements. Ratio, the more efficient and the less particles the filter element allows to go downstream. Now sources of contamination, where, do, where does the contamination come from? There's three main designations of contamination. There's a primary contamination which is uh, created with the installation of the system and we'll go a little bit further into that in the next couple slides. There's operating contamination that's operating and then there's contamination ingress, which is external uh, dirt that's brought into the system and through, uh, through the environment or some external factors. So if we look at the primary contamination, this is basically during assembly of the machine, the contamination that's left in the machine before, uh, before it's started up for the first time. So contamination that's found on the initial components, uh, welding residue, down a, a hydraulic fitting before you you uh, uh, connect it to another another fitting. You're going to get the fibers in line, machine shavings, and new oil is is very dirty also, and that should always be filtered before um, before entering into the tank. So some of the primary contamination spots, just visually uh, shown here, is you know built in the dirt that's going to be in the reservoir when you first build it. Fittings, the dirt on fittings. If, you know, the assembler drops it, drops the uh, fitting on the floor, picks it up, puts it on. You're going to have that dirt that gets into the system. So all the all the initial dirt from the assembly process is the primary contamination. And new oil. If you look at this description, new oil is not filtered or clean oil. It's actually very dirty. If you look at this. Um, it shows in new oil you have very wide 
range of size particles found in, in a sample of new oil. Each division is 20 micron here. So you can see, if you look, we have some very small particles that are probably one, two, three micron. We go up, we've got you know 20 micron particles here and 80 or 100 micron particles over here. So it ranges anywhere from the very small particles to very big particles. So I want to stress as you're adding it to the system <clears throat> or, um, or filling up the tank, topping it off. Operating contamination occurs within the system. And this is generated through abrasion and through wear. So your hydraulic uh, pumps, gear pumps with the metal-to-metal uh, -metal contact, you're getting abrasion and wear through on the gears. Uh, the sliding surfaces of uh, you know, some metal-to-metal -metal contact there create some abrasion and wear. So each, just from the operation of the system, uh, the components are generating their own amount of contamination into the oil. Contamination ingress is where faulty breather element or dirty breather element is uh, the primary cause and also bringing dirt in through the cylinders. As the cylinder rod extends and retracts, each time the cylinder rod is outside in the atmosphere, the dirt is sticking to the, the sheen of oil over the, uh, the rod you know, seals and rod wipers that are supposed to prevent that, but you're always going to get some dirt brought back in through cylinders. And visually, we're looking at, um, you know, cylinder rods that bring um, the dirt in, uh, new oil or topping off the system again. If that's not filtered, <coughs> you're uh, bringing more dirt into the system. And air breathers, which is a big culprit of, of in this is typically some of the things that you might see out in the field, you know, improperly installed breathers, which uh, these breathers are designed to filter the air. As the oil level in the tank changes, uh, the, the tank must breathe air and release air out. So if it's improperly installed here, the breather isn't really doing anything on the right-hand side because you have a big gap there. And there you're getting all the dirt uh, through the amp. Beside, you can see how uh, the top of the reservoir isn't very clean, and um, a lot of uh, contamination can get in through the breather if that's if it's already contaminated or somebody took the element out and didn't replace it. So it's one area that's often overlooked is the filler breather or a breather element. Now there's a number of areas to locate filters in the system different options available in different styles. But there's an offline filter, which will go over the advantages um, and the function of the offline filtration packages. Pressure filters, we'll show you the different types available there and why you should install a pressure filter. Same with the return line filter. There's uh, different styles and types available for return and what its purpose in the system does. And an inlet line filter um, also is um, has some uses in various systems. And the breather, which we just touched on in the last couple of um, pic pictures. But if we start, the suction filter is installed in the suction line before the pump. Its purpose is to remove contaminants in the oil in the reservoir, and it's supposed to protect the pump. Um, in most cases, um, recommending suction filters because the main problem with suction filters is as their their job is to protect the pump and clean up the oil in the reservoir is if they're not maintained and there's no bypass valve you can starve the pump of oil and, uh, and cause cavitation and catastrophic catastrophic failure with the pump so a lot of manufacturers and system designers are, are getting away from the suction filter there's uh, still suction strainers out there that that are uh, some type of suction filters that have indication and can be mounted uh, tank top or to the reservoir that will allow you to see when the element's uh, contaminated. So if we look at the Molly um, product line for suction filters, PI-1710 is a suction strainer 
which is generally in, located inside the tank, right on the um, on the inlet pipe to the pump. And this common filter is actually mounted on the top and have indication to tell you when the element's contaminated. And we can also use uh, spin-ons in the, in the suction line. So again, it's not really not not a very uh, common type of element or filter anymore due to the, uh, the problems they have if it's not properly maintained. Pressure filters are installed after the pump in the pressure line. And the purpose of a pressure filter is to remove contaminants in the oil that are, one, generated by the pump, and two, it's designed to be um, uh, placed right before the most critical components, your directional control valves, servo valves, proportional valves, have very tight tolerances and you want to put a filter before those are from the harmful dirt. So that's it's kind of dual purpose. It gets rid of the generated particles from the pump and protects your, your uh, sensitive, dirt sensitive components. And there's a, a large selection. I'm just going to breeze through these to show you uh, different types that are available. But there's a large selection of pressure filters out there that vary on the type of mounting, the size, the overall pressure, medium pressure, and high pressure in the Molly product line. But as you can see, here's a, a PI-150, which is a base-mounted filter with the, the ports and the head on the bottom with the, uh, the bowl uh, upright. PI-200, many different sizes from a, a small 15 gallon a minute up to 120 gallon a minute size. and uh, different options with bypass valve, without bypass. Molly filters do have all those options of different port sizes from your European metric stand ports to SAE, which is a U.S. standard, NPT, which is a U.S. standard. So we have a lot of options, even with um, code 61 or code 62 uh, flange connections. Low pressure duplex filters. The advantage of a duplex filter is it's still operating under uh, up the fluid flowing through a different element. So it's continuous operation. You don't need to shut the system down to change an element. So these are very handy where uh, the system can't be shut down or if it's 24 hour operation. And um, you can change one while um, still operating through the other. Spin-on filters are low pressure, can be used low pressure, pressure, higher flow or high viscosity type filters, PI-230, um, dual flow um, spin-ons. <clears throat> so as you can see, there's just a lot of different types of filter. The PI-1907 is a high flow. These are generally used where you have a central power unit that goes out to many different uh, areas in the plant, and then you have all the lines coming back into one central uh, central system. You uh, funnel all the and same with the PI-281. It's just a very large uh, duplex filter. So again, for areas where you can't shut the system down or it's expensive uh, downtime, uh, suggest duplex filters. Medium styles, manifold mount, uh, inline filters, PI360, which is very common um, for us here at Behringer. It's one of our most popular um, popular sellers on the, the medium pressure. Medium pressure duplex, same application, same operation type as the PI210, low pressure duplex, but higher pressure rating. And PSI. This is a, a stacking type filter in between, to go in between your subplate and proportional valve with a DO3 and DO5 patterns. PI420, high pressure inline filter similar to the, uh, the PI360. But I just want to really breeze through these and show you that there's a lot of options and a lot of styles available depending on your customer's requirements. High pressure duplex. It's an all stainless steel, the PI 480, and a small inline low profile type filter, the PI 1123. 
Return line filters are installed in the return line right before the reservoir, usually mounted on the reservoir with the tank uh, or the inside the reservoir. And its job is to remnants generated in the system through a waiter, your cylinder or motor. And it's the, the purpose of that is anything that that cylinder rod brings in from external to get rid of that before it goes into the tank. Also, the function of the return line filter is um, to get rid of all the contamination before it's in the, it gets to the reservoir, then theoretically the reservoir can be somewhat clean or stay somewhat clean. Now, the big, big, uh, it doesn't have to handle the pressures of a pressure filter, um, so it can be made out of aluminum instead of steel or even plastic in a lot of cases. So if customers don't have any filtration, I would suggest at least return line filtration where it's a lower cost filter because it doesn't have to hand. And times it has to be um, sized twice the size of a pressure filter depending on your actuators. If you have a two to one, uh, two to one cylinder and your return flow is twice what your uh, pressure flow is or your inlet flow, then the filter has to be uh, much bigger. But like I said, the advantages of the pressure and the return line or the pressure filters is that it, you know, before you get into your your servo valve, so you're really protecting the components. This doesn't do any direct protection of any components, but it, uh, it's supposed to clean up the oil before it gets to the reservoir. Some types of pressure filters: the PI500 is a tank top mount where you have a flange that mounts on the top of the tank. This part of the filter would be below below tank level or in the oil, about uh, 300 gallons a minute. PI510 is that same filter except with a duplex valve in the center. And then we have smaller, lower flow um, PI530s where we can get an integrated breather. Um, either in a plastic or aluminum construction. And breather filters, we touched on that. The contaminants from the air as it's drawn into the reservoir. As the oil level of the tank changes, air is moving in and out of the, the reservoir. So we need to filter that air before it gets into the oil. And we have many types. Molly offers many types of uh, filler, or filler breathers, or just breather filters with replaceable elements and indicators for larger tanks, larger air flows, all the way down to real small threaded, threaded type. And the last type of filter is an offline filter, which is one of the most efficient forms of filtration. It's used as a, a supplement to the system filters. You're, it's sometimes called a kidney loop or a bypass filter. Operates independently of the system. And what it does is it recirculates the fluid through the reservoir. And the reason it's the most efficient is it's a, it's a stable flow. There's no in flow or changes in pressure. Or anything. So the, your most efficient form of filtration is a nice constant flow, constant temperature constant pressure, and the uh, kidney loop or offline filtration does that and makes it very efficient. Um, a lot of some of the advantages of the offline filter machine is running. You can have it running when the machine is not running. Again, no, no flow surges, no pressure spikes, so it's very efficient. Uh, it's low pressure, so you can have lower cost elements and also install uh, oversize the filter so you have very large filter for large dirt holding capacity, less maintenance, you don't have to change it that frequently. Increased service life, if you're cleaning the oil up in the reservoir, all your more expensive high pressure filters in the system will, um, will last longer because you're uh, maintaining the oil quality. And you can actually use it as uh, some people call it a polishing type filter where you put a finer micron rating in there than what your components need. Normally you size up the fill, so I need 
the manufacturer recommends three micron for that servo valve. Or if you have a proportional valve, the manufacturer of the valve might say 10 micron is efficient, or this cleaning this level of oil is efficient. So if you need 10 micron in your system, you can put a 3 micron or a 1, 2 micron in a, a bypass filter to keep the oil even cleaner than, than what it's required so you can, uh, those filters can last a lot longer. So the Molly offers is uh, a stationary type with the pump motor or the same filter except made on a, uh, a mobile a filter cart. So those are two options. We also have other options available for filter carts and uh, uh, kidney loop filtration. The only disadvantage of the, uh, uh, the offline filter is um, actually not really disadvantage. It is higher cost because you have a pump and motor and it's independent operation, so you have a complete package. And also it really it's cleaning up the fluid, but it doesn't directly protect any of the components in the system. So it's used as an auxiliary or a supplemental filtration system rather than a filter that's going to provide direct protection to your hydraulic components. Now to size and select a filter, we need to um, first determine where you want the filter located. What, what is the customer looking for? Does he want a suction filter, a pressure filter, a return line? Um, does he already have existing return line pressure? So we need to find out where we want to install the filter. And what type of connections are required? Is it an SAE, NPT, manifold mount, um, pressure, flow rate, and the fluid type? And we can determine the viscosity operating temperature, and um, the micron or cleanliness class desired. So those are the things we need to know to properly size a filter. We're, we're not going to get into, uh, you know, the details on how to size and figuring out pressure drops today, but we here at Behringer will, uh, will help out assembly. We can help out if we get, uh, you know, a little bit of minimum information, pressure, temperature, flow rate and the type of fluid and where they want to put the, the filter and we'll be able to uh, help and size size up the filter for you. But uh, that was about it, a quick uh, introduction to the Molly product line along with some basic filtration terminology and um, items. So if there's um, any questions, we'll stay on here for for a couple more minutes, and um, but I, again, we thank you for your time and, and attention. And uh, again, if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks again.